All right, how's everybody doing? This is uh, getting started with Meshtastic. Anybody here heard of Meshtastic before? Yeah, awesome. Anybody who has not heard of Meshtastic before? Awesome, you are the people I'm trying to reach. Uh, so who am I? I am, uh, I go by Aramon2001 on Twitter, um, KD2WUB, and uh, I enjoy making stuff sometimes with antennas. Generally, you know, pretty interested in RF. So uh, yeah, that's me. And uh, what's this talk about? So Meshtastic, it's kind of a new thing and I would like to see more of it out there. Um, it's pretty boring to just message yourself in the house. So if I can get more of you guys using it, maybe we'll see more people out there. And yeah, that's all awesome. So what are we gonna cover? Uh, basically just what is Meshtastic? High level, what is LoRa, which is what it uh, runs on, and then why would you do it? What do you need to use it? And hey, let's make some mesh networks. So what is it? Uh, Meshtastic is an open source project uh, aiming to create mesh communications. So off-grid, no infrastructure needed. Um, basically, you just buy a little board. Maybe you put it on a hard hat, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, that board uses LoRa, which is a uh, method of mod modulation for RF that is basically long range, very low data rates. Um, that board then piggybacks to your phone, generally either over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and allows you to type text messages back and forth to people on the mesh, or share GPS data, um, basically anything you want. So uh, it's based on the chirp sp spread spectrum, and it's basically just making a trade-off in your link budget to uh, basically do slower speeds, you know, smaller amounts of data to get a longer range and better signal-to-noise ratio. Um, if you want to know more about how LoRa actually works and under, under the hood, uh, there's an amazing talk. It was at DEF CON 24. Uh, it was by Matt Knight. Um, and I highly recommend you go check that out. He goes into way more detail than I ever could um, and talks about all the frequencies, the spreading factors, coding rates, and all of that. So in, in Meshtastic, a pretty big concept is a channel. And a channel is just a collection of settings uh, that the radio needs to communicate. So uh, it basically compromises, uh, comprises of a channel ID, a modem configuration, a channel name, a pre-shared key, and a region. So what are all of these things, right? Uh, two of the easy ones are channel ID and channel name. They're just an integer and a string used to identify all these settings. Then you have the modem configuration. And this is where all those LoRa settings uh, get set. So. Um, you pick your bandwidth of your signal, your coding rate, your spreading factor, and that is gonna determine the maximum uh, speed that you can transmit data. And so all of these settings in the modem config, um, oh, sure, oh, all good. Uh, so each of these settings are basically just, uh, they have some shorthand names you see on the left there, and uh, they have some common names as well, like short, fast, short, slow. Um, there is a default if you flash mesh-tastic to your board, and that's what I've seen most people using uh, during the con here, which has been great. Uh, and there's all sorts of uh, extra documentation that you can find at that link right there. Uh, also, it uses a pre-shared key for encryption. Um, it can use AES-256 encryption, uh, doesn't always though, so you can set it to none. Uh, there's also a default key, which uh, I believe is included in all of the source code, so anybody can decrypt those. You might have some fun with that, you might not. Um, you can also use random, which will use that a randomly generated AES 256 bit key and is generally the most secure of those settings. Uh, you can also just use a single byte to encode. Uh, 
Next up is your region. So depending on where you are in the world, you may have different uh, regulations uh, controlling what you're able to transmit and where. And so when you pick your region, it actually sets the center frequency, um, the spacing between those frequencies and the channels, the number of channels, and also the power limit, if you have one. So let's say, hey, you want to get into this. Uh, you do need some hardware. Uh, there's generally two form factors. There's ones that are based on the ESP32, um, and there's also ones that are based on the NRF52 chips. And uh, generally, you can get a radio for anywhere from like $30 to $50, uh, depending on how fast you want to get it shipped to you. Um, I've had a lot of experience with the Lilygos and the Helltech. Uh, I've yet to try the Rack um, card, but want to check it out soon. Um, so that's great. You have the hardware. It can talk uh, over the radio. How do you actually like type a message and interface things? And that's where it uh, piggybacks to your phone generally. Um, you can get an app either on the Google Play Store or on iOS in the Apple App Store. Um, to get it on iOS, you actually have to download this test flight app. And then from within that app, you load in uh, basically a beta version of the Meshtastic app. Um, I'm going to warn you, it can be a little buggy right now. It's definitely you know, a project in development. And go out, try things, and submit bug reports. Uh, next up, we have the Python CLI. Um, in there, you definitely get a lot more options to all of the settings, uh, especially if you're on an iPhone. Uh, the app is a little more limited than the Android app right now. Um, if you want to do things like change the name of your node and things like that, you should check out the CLI. Um, it's installable via pip and um, pretty easy to use. It's, if you just type it, it'll give you all the options that you can use and uh, instructions for that. Uh, what kind of information can you share? So it's, like I said, it's very slow speed. So you're, you're going to be spending, sending small uh, bits of data, generally text messages. Uh, you can also share your location if you so choose and if you have a GPS connected. Um, so there's all sorts of applications for this. You know, if you were, I always think of like if you were on a search and rescue team or something, you could get, you know, everybody on your crew and you could see where they're at. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it, Definitely has lots of uses for that. Um, also, sensor data. There is uh, su some support for like temperature sensors and things like that. So you could distribute different nodes um, across a property, for instance, and monitor different things with different sensors. Uh, there's also extra modules within the software. So if you want to do something extra than what the app does, there's room to tinker. Uh, and that's, that's always fun. So you can connect. Uh, different I squared C connectors, uh, sensors, like I was talking about. Um, you can also set your module to send canned messages, um, either triggered with like a button or a rotary encoder. Um, and there's also serial input for messages. So uh, I don't know if there's there's actually a whole group of people trying to build little communicators uh, where you have like a, a embedded keyboard and everything, and um, you can talk via serial from one microcontroller to the MeshTastic node. Um, and then do, do things that way, too. So if you want to find out more, um, you, sh you can go to meshtastic.org, and there's a whole docs page in there on how to get started, how to flash your, uh, your board, and yeah, definitely more information there. So hopefully now you guys all know a little bit more about Meshtastic. I hope um, some of you get interested in it and maybe try it out. Any questions? Cool. Mm -hmm. I've not, but that kind of makes sense to me, like that it, it would. Um, because you're really just seeing it on the frequency. You're, you probably can't see what it is. It'll just show up as an encrypted message to you, but it, it probably will try to you know, act as a mesh and retransmit that out to other nodes that may have that encryption key. I don't know if that's as designed or not, but I haven't run into it personally. Cool.
yeah. Um, so I did a little like test from my house where I set up an, an antenna and then I was, just kind of went walking around my neighborhood. I got it to about a mile. Um, I know you can get better with more line of sight. I've heard people get up to like three miles almost. Um, it really depends on your, you know, what's in the middle and what kind of antenna you're using and what your transmit power is. So. Anybody else? Yeah. Sure. I think that they're just more developed. So people have made firmwares for them that, you know, they know which uh, module is on there. I don't think there's really any reason it couldn't be done. It's just I don't think it's been developed yet. Like, but I think you could. Sure. Yeah, oh yeah, I didn't mention, but there is also a Meshtastic Discord with a whole bunch of people that know way more about it than I do. Um, but it's been a great place to hang out and just you know, ask questions and see what people are building. And uh, there's a whole bunch of people like doing 3D prints for cases and things like that and different designs. So definitely a cool thing to check out. Cool. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you for your time. And I'll be around. You can probably find me with a hard hat if you have any other questions. So thank you very much.